Hi, I'm Mark Lawson, president of the ECS Publishing Group, and we are here today to talk to Eric Nelson about his newest piece in the NCCO Choral Series entitled Birdsong. So welcome, Eric. Hello, how are you today? It's great to have you here. In case you don't know Eric, Eric is the director of choral activities at the Emory University and also the artistic director with the Atlanta Master Chorale. So Eric, this newest piece is called Birdsong. It's a very fascinating poem. Tell me about how you found it and a little bit about the construction of the piece. So I've discovered Rumi, a great a Persian poet from the 13th century in the way that I discover most poets. And that's by finding music that uses that poet's lyrics, that poet's texts. Um, I find that a lot of the poets that I've learned to love over the years, I found not because I read books of poetry, but because their music, their words have been set in music. And then I, that leads me to an appreciation for not only the music, but the words. And that's the case with Rumi as well. I had done kind of coincidentally several works by Rumi in the same season uh, at Emory University and was taken by all of those texts and um, got excited uh, talking about them uh, in the process of learning the music. And when the year ended, that academic year, this is three, four years ago maybe, um, the graduating senior class at the end of the year event uh, presented me with a gift, which was really kind. And when I opened it up, it was a book of the complete poetry of Rumi, uh, translated into English by Coleman Barks, uh, and they had all signed it. And they said, you know, knowing your new appreciation for Rumi, uh, we have it too, and here's some more. And so I began reading that, uh, and was that was kind of the end of it, I thought. And then I received a commission from Curtis Nolly at Shenandoah Valley Choral Society in Virginia to write a piece for their 50th anniversary. And the only parameters around the commission was that they were going to be doing a concert about singing, right? Music about singing. And they, they said, you can do whatever you want, but that's the theme. And it would be nice if there was some overlap. So I said, I've never set any music to the words of Rumi. Would, you, would that be something you'd be interested in? He said, oh yeah, that'd be great. So I pulled my new book off the shelf and began to, to um, read with the intent of finding some poems about singing and found this one. And it's just wonderful because it is, I suppose, sacred um, in a way. And, but also kind of a universal sense of insecurity, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So it starts out saying that the poet notices that, that bird song is all around and that the birds are ecstatic, they seem to be. And that the poet says, I'm as ecstatic as they are. I'm excited, but I have nothing to say. And I remember when I first read the poem, as we began to learn this piece um, uh, th this, this fall, that I saw the body language of, of my singers, uh, this kind of flash, even with masks on, this kind of flash of acknowledgement of, oh yeah, we know what that feels like, you know, mm -hmm. to be uh, maybe, maybe at, a, at some kind of gathering of people uh, and, and everybody's talking and uh, you just don't know what to say or in class, certainly not knowing how to answer a question or, you know, there's all sorts of things in life where you feel like you're, you don't quite fit in this moment and you just don't know what to bring to the table, but it doesn't mean you're not interested. It doesn't mean you, you know, you just don't know what to say. Yeah. And then the second half of the poem is um, asking uh, what the poet calls universal soul to teach him teach the poet uh, some song to sing um, and ask the universal soul to sing this song through him. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought it was such a, a, an interesting mix of humility, 
Um, I don't know what to, to say and, you know, help me find something that's important and useful to share with the world that I don't know is, is humility. And yet there's some, some chutzpah to this. Um, yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I want to find something that's important to give to the world. And uh, that, that duality of, of, of that moment in life, I just found to be fit, just fantastic. Yeah. You know, and I think the structure that you set up is, is really unique with that as well. Um, the way you start it is this dialogue between the piano and the choir where the piano kind of has the bird song yes. feel and it's light and airy and it starts out like that. Then you transition into a much deeper kind of realm as they're struggle the struggle. And then you come back out of it with this ecstatic bird song. Yeah. And I just think that's delightful. Um, is that unusual for you? Is that what you were trying to set up? I, I, that it's what the poem sets up. I remember, um, coming home. I hope this is not too much inside baseball, but I remember coming home and saying, uh, to my wife that I've, I've got this commission and I've decided which piece to write and I'm excited about it. And, uh, and she said, how, you know, how's it going to be? And I said, Oh, it's going to write itself. <laughs> and, and she looked at me funny and said, no, 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 I don't mean that. It's just that the structure, uh, as you just described it, was in the poem itself, that, that the, where the words say, but I have nothing to say, is obviously a change in texture. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my decision to bring back the energy of the first is my own sense of you know, rounding things off um, and wanting to end with some energy and optimism and joy and buoyancy. Um, because it, it, the poem is kind of in the two parts, not the three. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I've, I've not quite ever done before is the, that, that one phrase, I've got it in front of me here, but um, I'm, ex I'm as ecstatic as they are, the bird songs, but with nothing to say. And that little section I made into almost a recitative um, with some quasi jazz chords, mm -hmm. um, ending with a soloist saying the words, uh, nothing to say. So there's just, it's it, all, all alone um, and unsupported. And then the, the next section, which is please, please universal soul practice some song through me. That's, that's where it gets uh, deeper. Yeah. And, um, I found a little gesture um, uh, at, the, at the bottom of page nine, there's, there's a little three chord gesture da -dee -dee, that I found was, um, had a sense of imploringness. Um, and I found it fairly early in the writing process and um, couldn't get rid of it. It just, it just seemed right to me. And uh, yeah. that, that generated uh, everything which comes after it in the, in the second part of the piece. Well, I know you just recently performed this with your own choir. Uh, talk about that experience of both the singers and the audience. Well, you never know. I mean, every composer and arranger who writes a piece does their very best and hopes that it's going to work and hopes that there's, um, as I describe it sometimes, hope that, hopes there's something in it, um, some, something that, um, that is more than just notes on the page uh, that speaks to the singer and to the listener. Um, we always do our best, but you never know. And some pieces are kind of more successful than others. And so until it's out in the air, until, until you hear singers sing it, players play it and audiences receive it, um, you never, never know quite for sure. And uh, I, I was really, really delighted that from the very first moment of trying to teach this piece to my college choir, um, they sat up a little straighter and, uh, and, and moved as they sang and, and really, uh, really enjoyed it and liked the, the music and the text right from the get go. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose it's, it's one of the hallmarks of my compositions that I really do want singers and audiences to relate to it. And um, I, was, I, was, I came of age in choral music at a time when if you announced to an audience from the stage that you were going to sing a brand new piece, you feel this collective groan from the audience. Oh no, right? Because it tended to be uh, pr pretty difficult to take, just you know, spiky and dissonant and, and, and odd, and, and almost off-putting. And some of those pieces have become 
loved, just took a little time, and mm -hmm. others have disappeared. Um, but for one reason or another, I, I do want my pieces to be received um, by an audience fa fairly quickly. And so when I found that the choir appreciated it, uh, found it to be useful work to learn it. Um, and then the choir of well, all the audience from what you can tell from uh, body language and applause and reaction and people saying nice things after the concert um, seem to really um, appreciate it, uh, mm -hmm. what the text is saying and enjoy it. It is for me, it's the job of the composer to uh, help the poetry to speak. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it would seem to be all about the music. But for me, uh, it, it, as a choral composer, it's all about the text and trying to find a way through the music to heighten what's already in the text. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's a wonderful piece and I think it's a great addition to the NCCO series. And uh, I thank you for taking time to discuss it. I appreciate the opportunity. I hope that people uh, sing it and hear it and enjoy it. Well, great. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.